We're excited to have you here today. Good morning and welcome to students, faculty, staff, and university family. It's an honor to be with you this morning and introduce the president of our great university. President Pastides is a leader with great vision who inspires each of us to fulfill our university's mission of teaching, research, creative activity, and community engagement. He is a beloved member of our university family and values interacting with faculty, staff, and students. One memory that stands out in particular is college game day just last October. Hundreds of students spent the night on this historic horseshoe in anticipation of the great tradition of Carolina football. As students were taking part in the excitement of college game day, President Pastides and his wife arrived on the horseshoe just shortly after 11 p.m. Students quickly lined up to give President Pastides a high five and check off the first item on their USC bucket list when the familiar anthem of Sandstorm began to play. Miss Pastides reached into her purse, pulled out her handkerchief, and began waving it proudly, just as the president led the students in celebration. Over the past five years, President Pastides has not only served as the president of our university, but has immersed himself in the Carolinian spirit, exemplifying the qualities that make each of us proud to call Carolina home. Ladies and gentlemen, President Pastides. Well, good morning, everybody. What a beautiful day for gathering on the historic horseshoe. This is my sixth State of the University address, and I continue to look forward to this occasion with great enthusiasm. As I look out, I could see that we've gathered and converged from many points on many of our campuses. I thank you for joining me. As we take a look at the past year, we celebrate high achievement, and of course, as we look into our future together. Thank you, Chase, for that thoughtful introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, Chase embodies the leadership spirit that I hope to see in all of our students. And he's using his leadership skills to launch important programs like the Gamecock Pantry, a USC food bank, and Walk Home Cocky, another effort to assure the safety of all of our students. Our university is also very fortunate to have Danielle Schaffman, a doctoral student in the Arnold School of Public Health. She is the president of our Graduate Student Association. You'll hear from her in a little bit. She is a clear voice for our graduate students' welfare. Welcome, Danielle. And wow, from the piccolos to the sousaphones, the band looked majestic marching up to our horseshoe. I can't imagine a better way to herald in the state of the university. This past Saturday, I loved their rendition of Queen's We Will Rock You. And they did rock us, didn't they? Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking Dr. Rebecca Phillips and the mighty sound of the South Southeast, the USC Marching Band. I would also like to recognize the people who help guide and support our five universities and our 14 campuses, members of our Board of Trustees, led by the Honorable Gene War, Chairman, our Board of Visitors, and the Alumni Association Board of Governors. I thank those representatives for being with us today. And a special good morning to members of the General Assembly from both the House of Representatives and the Senate who are with us. I have a tangible proposal for higher education in my remarks today, and I'm appreciative that you are here. And I also wel welcome the representatives and good neighbors from both city and county governments. We're appreciative of all that you do for Columbia, for the Midlands, and for all of the communities of which we are pri privileged to be part of. Finally, I warmly recognize Patricia Moore Pastides, our First Lady, 
who tirelessly advocates for healthy living within the university and the broader community, and who's a constant source of love and guidance for me and our family. Welcome, Patricia. A little over a month ago, in August, the 1st of August, marked two major milestones in my professional life. On August the 1st, 1998, I joined the university as dean of the Arnold School of Public Health, and exactly 10 years later, I became Carolina's 28th president. I think that a five-year milestone provides an opportunity to assess where we've been and what we've accomplished. Of course, these have been very turbulent times for South Carolina and for the world at large. And we have had our struggles. But like with any individual or any family, struggle makes one stronger and leads to progress. Fortunately, as the national economic calamity approached, we had already started planning and Focus Carolina was starting to guide our progress in seven specific areas. Scholarship, leadership, innovation, diversity, access, global competitiveness, and community engagement. Adhering to the plan, adhering to Focus Carolina during the worst recession our nation has seen in seven decades, made our university stronger and more confident. This morning, I'd like to amalgamate these seven focus areas into what I believe is now our university's identity. And then I'd like to chart the year ahead. Our identity, of course, springs from who we are, what our strengths are, and also from our reputation, what people think and say about us. And I believe that our identity can be captured in the following four principles. One, the University of South Carolina is a globally recognized, high-impact research university. Two, the University of South Carolina is recognized for a superior student experience. Three, the University of South Carolina is committed to developing flexible new models for college access and affordability. And four, the University of South Carolina is a vital part of South Carolina's economic and overall well-being. Let's take one at a time. The University of South Carolina is a globally recognized high-impact research university. Our national and global rankings are exceptional in many important areas, none more relevant than the Columbia campus's designation as the state's only Carnegie top-tier research university. That ranking recognizes USC in the same category as the Ivies and all the other top private and public research universities. We're in good company. For the 17th year, the Darla Moore School of Business remains the premier undergraduate school for international business and continues to attract extremely bright students from around the globe. You'll be pleased to know that the Moore School's new home scheduled for completion in the spring will afford an open and flexible design that will foster interaction and collaboration and I predict that it will quickly be recognized in academic circles around the world as the preeminent place for teaching and learning business. Graduate rankings are also essential. U.S. News and World Report gives the College of Education a number five national ranking for selected graduate programs and named seven other graduate programs in the university, business, library science, public health, criminology, and psychology among the nation's best. And the National Research Council has ranked our electrical engineering department first in the South and seventh in the entire nation among public and private universities in program quality. 
Members of our faculty continue to attract global recognition. And while there are far too many honors to mention individually, I'll note that a significant number of our faculty were honored this year again by being named fellows in the most prestigious American Association for the Advancement of Science. We now have 23 AAAS fellows of whom we are extremely proud. University 101 earned Carolina a spot among the best first year experiences in the nation in the America's Best Colleges Guide. And of course, you know that the South Carolina Honors College was ranked number one in the nation in the 2012 Review of 50 Public University Honors Programs. Two, the University of South Carolina is recognized for a superior student experience. 46,000 future leaders, critical thinkers, and problem solvers are enrolled today across the USC system. Nothing I will tell you today makes me prouder than the students we enroll and the students that we graduate. Students, after all, are the reason that we're here. By creating opportunities for them to flourish, we are investing in our own collective future. It's clear that we've become a destination point for top performing high school seniors near and far. As our application rates steadily increase, we're able to serve larger numbers of qualified South Carolinians more than ever before, as a matter of fact, as well as top students from out of state and from around the world. Let me share a little more detail. Applications and enrollment are at an all-time high here in Columbia. This year, more than 23,000 students applied to the university, and of those, about 5,000 enrolled. Last year, 349 freshmen enrolled in the Honors College, and this year, that number rose to 411. Their average SAT score is 1431. Their average high school GPA is 4.61. Last year, 537 freshmen were named capstone scholars. This year, we have 760. But it takes a lot of resourcing, a lot of money, to support the financial needs of students who choose to attend Carolina. And with the help of Carolina's promise, our unprecedented capital campaign, we've experienced real growth in our scholarship programs. For example, with the help of a generous gift from the Stamps Family Charitable Foundation, we have added some new Stamps Carolina Scholars. They've been added to our most prestigious in-state scholarship program, the Carolina Scholars. It's so clear to me that we're becoming known year by year as a university that produces leaders as well as graduates. Kirk Randazzo, Associate Professor of Political Science, joined us last year as director of the Carolina Leadership Initiative, where he works with Dean Helen Derpinghouse and many others to develop leadership programs. For the first time, undergraduates have, they now have the opportunity to leave Carolina with a new distinction, graduation with leadership. One of these students, Amy Hartman, is with us today. She's from Maryland. Amy and many others will be recognized at commencement and on their transcript as having fulfilled stringent requirements in one of four targeted areas of leadership, community service, global learning, professional and civic engagement, and research. The desired result of an exceptional liberal arts, sciences, and humanities education is, is a student who graduates with intellectual curiosity, who thinks critically, who can analyze a problem and is able to find solutions. These are all the attributes that employers tell us they really want from our graduates 
and with USC graduates, they can find that. Of course, a superior student experience requires a superior faculty, and Provost Amaritas and the academic deans continue to develop the profile of our faculty as our faculty replenishment initiative has been moving forward. 127 outstanding new professors were introduced to our community at the general faculty meeting on the 4th of September. And they joined 120 new faculty who joined us the year before. This group brings us closer to our goal of 500 new faculty by 2015. And let me add that the caliber of these new faculty is very strong indeed. In fact, they're exceptional. Three, the University of South Carolina is committed to developing new models for college education to provide greater access and affordability. We continue, I believe, to be innovative in developing programs that do, in fact, increase access, flexibility, and therefore affordability. Let me quickly review four of our new distinctive programs. First, Gamecock Gateway. That's a partnership with Midlands Technical College that brings about 170 selected students to live on our campus while preparing them for direct transfer to USC as sophomores. It has been a great success. Gamecock Guarantee. Co this program covers the cost of undergraduate tuition and technology fees for a first generation college freshman from a low income family, a family making less than $17,000 a year. Palmetto College, of course, is South Carolina's public online baccalaureate completion degree program. In January, we brought Chancellor Susan Elkins to uh, Shepherd Palmetto College and we officially launched it at the State House on April 18th. Palmetto College now allows place-bound and rural students to complete their baccalaureate degrees with the quality of USC online. Over 500 have already enrolled with almost no marketing effort. Palmetto College was a great idea at the right time. And on your time graduation, provides incredible flexibility by opening up a full third semester in the summer. Spearheaded by Dean Marianne Fitzpatrick, Vice Provost for Special Academic Initiatives, On Your Time graduation was successfully piloted this past summer. Approximately 11,000 seats were full this summer. Students were extremely receptive, telling us that the new full semester makes their education more efficient and more affordable. For example, this summer we offered a business institute for non-business majors, comprising classes that are frequently hard to get into in the fall or in the spring. Core courses in economics, accounting, marketing, and management they were filled to capacity, as were highly sought science courses like organic chemistry offered in a six-week format. Ladies and gentlemen, can you think of anything better to do than take organic chemistry in the summer? <laughs> I know that year-round college attendance is not for everybody, but if it's right for you, we will support your goal. Whether your goal is to graduate in four years or to graduate early in order to save money and jumpstart your career. This year, we're asking the Commission on Higher Education to support the use of lottery scholarships for credits that students take in the summer. That's a simple and an obvious action that will support flexibility and allow students to get their degrees in a more affordable time frame. Access at the University of South Carolina means access for all qualified students, not just for some. On September 11th, recently, and I hope some of you were present, we commemorated 
the 50th anniversary of desegregation at our university. It was an emotional day for many and a strong reminder that while we have come a very long way in a half century, we still want to go further. Professor and poet Nikki Finney got it right when she said that baby steps won't work. So I've recently hired Dr. John Dozier as our new chief diversity officer. He'll build on the recognition that we received from Insight into Diversity magazine that designated USC as a top national university for diversity and inclusivity. Four, the University of South Carolina is a vital part of South Carolina's economic and overall well-being. Friends, there's no point in mincing words. Our future and the state's future are married to each other. It's always been that way. When people around the nation hear a reference to our university, they immediately think about other characteristics of our state. And when think people think about higher education in the Palmetto State, they first bring to mind its flagship university, the university with the state's name embedded in its own name. We're already making a $4.1 billion annual economic impact on the state. That's huge when you think about it. It's more than 30 times what we receive in direct appropriation. And we plan to have an even greater statewide impact in the future. Recently, I consolidated all of our economic outreach efforts under the banner of the Office of Economic Engagement. And I appointed alumnus and entrepreneur Bill Kirkland as its executive director. Bill now oversees our economic outreach efforts, including faculty technology and commercialization. You may, may be surprised to learn that more than 400 invention disclosures have been filed by our faculty over the past five years and there are 86 active licenses where we are deriving income and that represents 120 USC developed technologies. And more innovations are being worked on by the 45 tenants of our USC Columbia Technology Incubator. It's on Main Street. I visited there recently and I saw emerging companies doing wonderful things like developing new phone apps, creating fuel cell technologies, and doing so much more. It raises my spirit to see what's happening at our technology incubator. With aviation companies moving to the state, USC is positioning itself to provide the R&D partnership that these companies need. The McNair Center for Aerospace Innovation and Research focuses on doing the work that not only will bring recognition to the university, but will also ensure that we bring new companies to South Carolina. Zafer Gerdahl will be recognized as the first McNair Endowed Chair on the 30th of September and Martin Keeney is serving us ably as the center's executive director. Stay tuned, there's gonna be a lot more coming out of the McNair Center. And if companies can't find the workforce and the talent that is critical to their work, they simply, simply won't come to our state. Fortunately, our College of Engineering and Computing has rapidly increased enrollment in the engineering majors. And the College of Arts and Sciences is expanding STEM opportunities for students in the science programs, especially for women and underrepresented minorities. We're doing more for our state than ever before. But ladies and gentlemen, now that I've outlined our identity and our ambitions, let me say emphatically that it's time to make a new compact with the state of South Carolina. If we can, let's agree to stop the finger pointing and to stop the blame game for escalating tuition. Let's agree to meet state government halfway. 
Let's find a formula for fairly funding a public baccalaureate education. Let's not consider a degree from Carolina a luxury. It is a necessity. It's a necessity for our state, and let's find a way to invest in higher education at a level that makes common sense and that is fair. The public wants that. I believe the public will support that. South Carolina is a manufacturing state, an IT state, an automotive state, an aerospace state. We have smiling faces and beautiful places, and that makes us a tourism state. But friends, South Carolina is not a higher education state. And that is a missing link to our well-being and to our future. This year, I plan to ask state government to work with me and to work with all public universities to commit to fair funding. This will make us make higher education accessible and affordable. And very importantly, it will stem the deplorable recent trend of fewer Americans and fewer South Carolinians attending college. We can look to other states, and we ought to, that recently have adopted uh, new funding models like Tennessee, Indiana, and Colorado. Uh, none of these models may be right for us, but we can certainly come up with a model that puts the brakes on tuition increases by providing fair funding. It would send a strong, nation, a strong signal to the nation that South Carolina has big plans to be a higher education state. Let me be clear even further, fair funding will require new money, more money, fresh money, or it won't work. We know that the economy is still tough, but we also know that over the last two years, state government has budgeted almost $1 billion in new recurring monies. But higher education received only a small fraction, about 2.7% of those new appropriations. So there must be new money appropriated. I will ask state government to agree to a three-year moratorium on tuition increases in return for increased state funding. I'll ask the state to recognize that unfunded mandates relating to government-determined faculty and staff raises increases in employer health insurance, uh, increases in energy costs that they all have been borne by our students and by their families, and this is not fair. I'm even willing to take a lead <clears throat> and calling for a moratorium on new earmarks for specific university projects. Again, I would do that in favor of stable and sustainable and fair funding. And all of our campus chancellors have agreed that this would be best, that this would be our priority. Students, friends, and colleagues, this may be the best time in our modern history to address the funding of public higher education. And if you agree, I'll be asking you for your support and advocacy in the months ahead. Do you agree, by the way? Achieving the goal won't be easy, but it's the most worthy cause that I can bring to you for your consideration. So let's all be part of a sustainable solution to the funding, the fair funding of higher education. Let's not stand idle while, while the sons and daughters of our state debate with their families whether they can afford a college education at USC. Surely that would cost much more from them and from us if they turn away from college. I'd like to turn briefly to Carolina's Promise, our historic $1 billion capital campaign. Simply put, sometimes I have to pinch myself, but simply put, we have set a new uh, standard for fundraising in South Carolina. To date, friends and alumni of the university, people who know that their university is taking its place on the world stage, 
have given or pledged $756.5 million. This includes another record-setting $149.1 million in the last fiscal year. Our totals in each of the last five years, in fact, are the five largest annual totals of philanthropic giving in the state's history. Each one of those of the past five years was a new record, not only for USC, but, for, but within the history of the state. There are many people who deserve thanks, including new members of the Horseshoe Society and a significant number of individual and institutional major gift donors. But this morning, I'd prefer to personally thank the Carolina family <clears throat> system-wide for contributing over five million dollars through the family fund last year. That's you and that's me. Five million dollars from our own family. Thank you so much, Carolina family. I know that that generosity, your generosity, reflects a deep commitment to Carolina even maybe especially during hard times. It's a source of inspiration for Patricia and for me. I offer a, a special thanks to the staff and faculty at USC Aiken who had a stellar participation rate of 94% last year. And USC Beaufort and USC Sumter had over 50% participation. That is absolutely wonderful. A great university is able to attract great talent and we're delighted to welcome our new Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations, Jancy Hauk. You can meet her uh, after the address today. Today is Jancy's third day of work at the university. And uh, she is fresh from a successful fundraising effort at Yale University. I can't wait for the campuses to get to know her uh, she brings lots of enthusiasm, experience, and warmth to our university. I also would like to uh, express my thanks to Susan Lee, who's here with us, and to the entire development team for not missing, missing a beat during the time of transition. Thank you, Susan. Ladies and gentlemen, a great university ultimately is judged not by what it gets, but by what it gives. And I'm so appreciative of the many faculty and staff members who commit to community engagement and civic responsibility. Our work with our surrounding communities, our neighbors, uh, creates a foundation for responsible citizenship. During the 2012-13 academic year, USC volunteers, including the student body, were involved in hands-on community service, philanthropic fundraising, community-based research, and more. In fact, listen to this, we had 23,000 volunteers completing one half million hours of community service last year. A new record, and what a record. Speaking of records, the university is having a great time in athletics, isn't it? And I'm so proud to be part of the Southeastern Athletic Conference. I'm particularly happy that we have no need to subsidize our athletic programs. In fact, it is USC Athletics that helps subsidize the educational mission of our university. I'm pleased that several of our coaches and our AD are here with us today. Welcome. Coach Martin, Coach Holbrook, <clears throat> Coach Beverly Smith, Coach Myers, Coach Esposito, uh, and, uh, and Coach Busher. And of course, welcome to our athletic director, Ray Tanner. Can we recognize all of these wonderful Gamecocks? <clears throat> you, like I, will continue to be in awe as the athletic village unfolds. In addition to the beautiful Doty and the Rice Athletic Center, the complex gained a state-of-the-art softball stadium and new tennis courts. 
Construction of five sand volleyball courts on the north end of the athletic village is underway, and I believe our new team is already in practice preparing for their first season. Our track is to be expanded to allow for nine competition lanes plus stadium seating. That's been a long time in coming. And the Athletics Village Promenade Walkway will be expanded to connect the softball and track facilities. The tennis complex will continue to evolve and improve with, men's, with a men's and women's team meeting, film, and locker room. I know you agree with me that our athletic village promises to be one of the best student athlete complexes in America. And also in the next couple of years, we'll see an indoor football facility as well as new outdoor practice fields that will include lighting, film towers, goal posts, and more for the Carolina football team. As important as athletics are for raising our spirits and raising our profile, I want to be unequivocal in my support for the arts and cultural contributions made by Carolina faculty and students. Our actors and dancers and artists and writers and musicians are the embodiment of our intellectual spirit. From theater South Carolina to our dancers collaborating with the stars of the New York City Ballet, to Chamber in a Vista, to the String Project, to our student and faculty art shows, to our poetry readings, to our McKissick Museum galleries, and to everything in between. And there is a lot of everything in between. Each of us is sensitized, humbled, and elevated uh, recognizing that the individual is a very small part of a very large and beautiful world. I ask you this year with me to attend as many events as possible and to celebrate the artists and creative talent uh, that is present in our university faculty, uh, staff, and our student body. I'm very impressed that on the weekend of September 27th and 28th, when the Gamecock football team, by the way, will be in Orlando playing the Knights of Central Florida, USC Salkahatchee, supported by our Department of Theater and Dance, will be participating in a grand reopening, the reopening of a renovated Carolina theater in Allendale, South Carolina. What an, what an incredible rebirth of culture and life that will be. Could take your pick football in Orlando or theater in Allendale, or do both, like I will. All of what we do is built, of course, on the great legacy of the students who came and left before, our alumni. We have a revitalized My Carolina Alumni Association. It's led by an energetic executive director, Jack Claypool. Nobody ever wants to follow Jack uh, at the microphone. We have over 270,000 Carolina alumni and they're anxiously awaiting the opening of our beautiful new alumni center. Slated for completion in early 2015, this 60,000 plus square foot facility will be the perfect place for alumni and students and the community to network, to hold conferences, and even to host wedding receptions. Last year, we unveiled the university's first ever integrated marketing plan and branding campaign. How wonderful it was to see our students, faculty, and staff embrace the notion that there are, you know, there are no limits to what we can achieve at the University of South Carolina individually and collectively. And now, and as Steve Jobs used to say at his press conferences, there's just one more thing. Today we are, we have introduced this morning the brand new sc.edu, brand new. I'm enthusiastic that our website is getting a new look and a new content management system. It, re it represents a brand new way of thinking about our website. All who visit, I think, will get a truer and a better feeling of what it's like to be right here on the horseshoe 
and at all of our campuses. So please take a, la a closer look later today. In closing, let me say it continues to be an honor to serve you as president. In looking back over the past five years, I see a university that has continued to grow in its self-confidence. While there are so many milestones that I could crow about, I believe that the number 45,910 holds the greatest significance for me. That is the number of degrees, the number of degrees that has been awarded system-wide during my presidency. That's 45,910 graduates who have had an impact on our communities and on our world. As you will agree, the University of South Carolina is vital to our lives. I pledge to you that as president, I'll continue to fight for our progress and to keep our forward momentum going strong. I appreciate your being with me this morning. So go Lancers, go Indians, go Bantams, go Pacers, go Sand Sharks, go Fire Ants, and go Gamecocks. Thank you, everybody, very, very much.